can we say to our fans from Cinepop that they need to be like very aware that there are some Easter eggs here and there, right? Of course. Olá, bem-vindo ao Stay in Awake. Eu tenho um distúrbio do sono. Não consigo perceber a diferença entre minha vida acordada e os sonhos. Olá, bem-vindo ao Stay in Awake. Hi, Stefania, how are you? I'm okay, nice to meet you. Oh, it's such a pleasure to meet you. I have to say that I loved your work in Moon Knight is extraordinary and i wanted to know from you how challenging was it to create this all of those sets and what's the most challenging thing in this process uh, i love your shirt by the way thank you very much <laughs> i'm here trying to you know get in the mood <laughs> i can see that that's a fantastic shirt um thank you well the first thing that i did is to educate myself on uh, egyptian culture so I went to Egypt and I spent uh, some time with uh, Mohammed Diab in Cairo and uh, and then I study, you know, Egyptian history and uh, the divinity and the gods and the, our comics and uh, how the Egyptian culture was interacting in our comics uh, and um, And then you know the the challenge uh, the challenge was try to be you know uh, fantastic uh, as the comics are, but also realistic in the loyalty of uh, the, the historical background. So we had a, an Egyptologist that help us to um, to have the hieroglyph behind. Uh, in the tombs and in the chambers of the god to be proper from the subject and we were doing and uh, and you know obviously it was a was a challenge but it was also a fantastic challenge because how many times in your life you can do egyptian ancient culture in this way also yeah yeah that's so true and are there any easter eggs from previous marvel projects in the sets like maybe i don't know some comics in steven's shelves or other objects hidden here and there yeah there are but i'm not allowed to say <laughs> there won't be an easter egg anymore there won't be an easter egg anymore oh my god but it's so good to know so uh, can we say to our fans from cinepop that they need to be like very aware that there are some easter eggs here and there right of course i mean they're always you know like even a reference on uh, the comics the moonlight oh comic they they are there oh my god that's great and when you were creating the sets uh what were your biggest references and inspirations to create not only steven's rooms but also all of those Cairo scenes that we have in the show what were your biggest inspirations and references did you go back to the comics did you get something some things from there as well absolutely to the comics but also to you know photography in uh, north africa and egypt and uh, i love to watch uh, movies uh, that are uh, you know historical in uh, times that you know we were doing and uh, you know the the biggest inspiration was egypt itself and uh, the antiquity of uh, of egypt that was the biggest inspiration even steven apartment is um it's uh, it's an attic because it looks like a pyramid so we 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 really brought in all of it and was possible that's so nice and it's so it's so nice that you said that because when we are watching the show and we see steven's room We know that he lives in an attic, but we don't get that, you know, that reference that is a direct reference to a pyramid. This is he's so in, nice. He's in a pyramid. <laughs> yes, amazing. This is so nice. That's what I love about production design. It's one of my favorite things when it comes to movies and TV shows. And I am in love with your work in this show, especially in episode four, because in episode four, we have like this amazing Egyptian ruins. And I wanted to tell me a little bit more about that set, because that set is a, it's a very complex set, right? The, la the last tomb or all of the tombs? Yes, on the tomb. 
all everything about that episode. We have uh, we have the Herald uh, Clinic at the end of the episode four, and we also have all of those Egyptian ruins, the tomb, and etc. Right? Uh, Stephen and and uh, and Leila need to go into you know a journey to find uh, uh, to follow arrows, right? So. We wanted to create, I, I wanted to create a kind of a labyrinth, uh, which comes again, the inspiration comes from Egypt because pharaohs used to bury themselves into chambers that had a lot of exit and entrance to deceive the, any, um, anybody that wanted to try to enter and suck the tombs. So they were like labyrinth themselves. So you had in the in the Valley of the God of the Kings, when you go into Tutankhamun tombs, there are a lot of chambers after chamber after chambers that kind of take you into a labyrinth until the last one where Tutankhamun was buried is the last one buried under other device so the idea was to create a, a sort of labyrinth to that and we came up by you know uh study proper uh um proper tombs how to go to do to that process so the first one is hidden into a steep uh, stairs uh, then there is one with all these reflective objects where they discover another clue then there is the the, the one that is uh, um, a collapse uh, and so it it was a it was a, a you know it was fun and challenging but it's also based on what they were doing anyway to deceive uh, you know um thief then we're trying to get in and, you know, they were buried with all of their belongings. So they were trying to deceive them. And it's such a powerful set. I love that. It's so beautiful when you are watching and it's so realistic. So yeah. Fun. What, what an amazing job. I have to say that I became a fan of your work by watching this show because it's so beautiful. So beautiful. Congratulations. Alex. Thank you so much. <laughs> You know, I, we are, the art department is made by a lot of people and I'm just very lucky to have a lot of people that are very good working with me. It's not just me, but thank I, you. <laughs> I know. And you and your team are like, are amazing. Congratulations to you and all of them. And thank you once again for this amazing opportunity. Thank you. This chaos in you. Embrace the chaos.